Hello, this is Warlord. Thanks for joining me. Today we have several topics to go over. In fact, we have five of them. We're going to start off with uh, how to use iClone on an illustration. And then we're going to uh, go into a tip when you're interacting with physics. After that, I'm going to cover some problems that were brought to my attention when you're stacking motions. I showed you how to stack motions earlier to keep them to uh, just an easy way to make them go in a straight line. Well, I found out later there's also some other problems there that I hadn't run into. So we'll go ahead and go over that. And then the next thing we'll be looking at will be uh, timing. How to use, how to go on the timeline and how to time like two separate motions, like a gunshot motion with an actual gunshot happening, like a splintering of a board. And then after that, we're going to take a look at reusing assets because people seem to keep forgetting that there's a lot of assets in some of these uh, pro projects and things that can be rescued for use in other projects. So anyway, let's get started. I had some inquiries about this scene that I used to illustrate an article over at Renderopti magazine. One of the reasons I use iClone is because it is simple. It doesn't take much to do it. And that particular illustration just takes two renders and something like Photoshop. So what we're going to do, now I don't have the lighting on this one. I have everything turned on so you can see it. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and just render this out. And shot one. Then we will come in, turn off the Hydra, render it again, shot two, or whatever you want to call it. And then from here, we'll go over into Photoshop. Now I'm going to drag shot one into the workspace. I'm going to drag shot two on top of it. And then I'm going to rasterize it. And you should be able to envision your shot. Or at least what you're going to do. And I'm just grabbing the marquee. I'm not going to use a mask or anything like that. I'm just grabbing this marquee and moving it over as close to this monitor as I can get. And then I'm going to just cut it. Just delete it. All I did was hit, uh, I believe it was Control X, just delete it. Now what I'm going to do is come in and just grab the eraser. And all you got to do is make sure you don't go past uh, the part where you don't want the body to show. And I'm just going to come in and erase the rest of it till it blends in. It's almost like cloning. In fact, you may forget you're erasing it and think you're cloning it. But anyway, that's pretty much all there is to doing a shot like that. Of course, with the right lighting, you get a really good illustration. And so once again, iClone comes to the rescue. I got an email the other day from a very dear friend that wanted to know why it was so hard to interact between objects, like something like making this thing move, with iClone. So I asked her to send me her project file. We looked at it. And this is not something I really even have to go through the steps to show you. All this stuff comes with iClone that you see in here. But the reason you don't, you shouldn't have to struggle with anything is use a dummy and make that dummy big enough that you can't miss. Use that to interact with. Don't use a finger or something on the finger or something like that. Just make it simple because nobody's going to see the dummy. And that sure is a whole lot easier than going in there and trying to actually get the thing to be hit with one of the fingers. Especially if the camera shot doesn't show it. What we're going to cover now involves stacking motions to make the character go in a straight line, which we've already covered once before. But it also involves the problems that pop up when people try to do this with different methods. If you'll just be careful how you do it and make sure what switches you have on, then you shouldn't have any problem. Now, when you first start, you can come in to perform, and you could come down and you could tell it, let's just go ahead and start with catwalk loop. And it'll walk to the end. But if you come in here again and go from perform and go to catwalk loop, they're just going to walk in place. So let's go back. And what we're going to do, the only difference we're going to do is we're just going to drag it over every time we need it.
But now look at what's happening. She's crossing that center line. She's getting, she's not, in other words, she's not going in a straight line. So what is going on here? Well, that's basically one little simple switch that came out in iClone 7. In fact, it was one of the updates. Where you come up here to animation, align to actor orientation, uncheck that. Then drag your motions over. And it should stick to a straight line. Now I've gotten a lot of email about this because quite frankly I didn't even know some of this was possible until I started looking into it. But for those of you that don't know any other way to animate a straight line and you just want to get something going, this is the simplest way to do it. Let's take a look at some basic timing. I have a board here I created in Studio Max that's going to splinter, but we need it to splinter at a proper time. I'm just going to remove the animation. So I'm going to come back here and grab my character, and I'm going to go over to the male shooting, hold gun shooting. We'll click it. Yes, it's got three shots, but we'll deal with that here in a minute. All we need is one of them. And what I'm going to do is find my first shot. And I'm looking at this area here. And I'm going to say somewhere right in there. I'm going to select my board and I'm going to go ahead and trigger my motion. It's going to be a little late because we did this after the shot. But all we have to do, it gave us a starting point. And all we have to do is come up here and move it a couple of frames over or whatever you want. And then we've actually changed where it's going to start by speeding it up. Now, we've also got three shots when we only need one. So, let's come in here and find out where the other shots start. And that's all I'm looking for. Looks like it's somewhere in here. I'm just going to split the difference on it and go to 71. And then I'm going to come down here. Right click. Break it. And then let's find a place where the gun levels out again after the other shots. Let's see. I'm going to say somewhere in there. That's 159. Alright, we're going to come down here. We're going to break it again. We're going to delete that. Move it up right next to it. Don't go over it. It's going to be a little rough. It may snap because we didn't pull out a transition handle, but I just wanted to show you that. Just watch closely and you'll see yeah, there's a little bit of a jump right there. If you're not familiar with transition handles, I'm just pulling this out to show you. There's your handle. So you can actually bump it right up next to your motion that's, that's preceding it. Pull out your handle and just work with that back and forth until you get something you like. And it just smooths out the transition between them. Now let's say we wanted to go a step further and we wanted to slow down once the thing explodes, once it starts splintering. Okay, based on the way it looks over here, I'm on 61 and I'm going to come here and I am going to break this motion. And the reason I'm going to break this motion, I need to get a little more room here, is I want to slow it down. And in order to slow it down, I need to come over here and take it to uh, where we can use speed. I'm going to pull it way out. I'm going to do the same thing because I want his motion to slow down. Also, and we've already got a brake there to work with. Now, did you notice how it immediately just slowed down? And you can make that as dramatic or as little as you want it to be. These two motions don't have to equal each other or anything. I just would usually keep the shooting motion out ahead of it. And you could do some kind of little fancy matrix kind of deal there if you wanted to come in while it's splintering. After it's normal, then it shoots, slows down, and what you could do is come over here, set a camera, and spin around this or something like that just to uh, highlight the splintering effect. Let's take a look at salvaging assets. 
This is something that I think gets overlooked, especially by new users. All I have here is the combat stage loaded from terrains. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the scene and we're going to select everything. Right click. We're going to convert them to props. Now it depends on how this is made. If this is not broke down into individual props over here, then you're not going to be able to break it down like this. But there's a lot of items in here that can be used. So now we have all of these as individual props. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights so we can see a little better here. Now, you can just start selecting item and saving them or deleting them. I'm just going to start deleting some things so you can see. Watch what? So you can see how this is broke down. Because let's say that you wanted to you wanted to go ahead and save this wreck right here. Or you wanted to duplicate it or whatever with control K or whatever. Now you've got it broke down to where you can get it. And all you got to do is come over to your content and save it as a prop. You can do this for all these things in here. If you never liked that particular bridge being in there, the bridge to nowhere, you just come in and take it out. Now if you'll notice that there's a lot of assets here that can be used. And you can break these down further depending on just how far you want to go or what software you might have. Some of these are not protected assets because they're stock assets. It's always been available. So as you'll notice right here, there's a lot of things from cargo container to buildings, lights, and now there'll be some will be in groups. You just have to see what you can do to see if you can get these things broke down any further. And then also remember that you can attach all these to one item or you can add a block in here, a dummy block in here or anything, and attach things to it and duplicate things to where uh, you don't have to just do it one at a time. In other words, you could lay out a different city with this and then attach all that to a block or one of the buildings and then duplicate that. That would duplicate everything in there and you can just spin it around, uh, orient it differently, and then you've doubled what you have as far as buildings and things like that in your shot. There's just a lot of things you can do and a lot of people just don't realize how you can break down some props. So remember, if you ever look over here and you see these are listed under terrain, you can break these down individually. Of course, these are already converted to props, which you saw me do. But you can break these down individually, or you can come in and make them groups. But the biggest thing is you can come in and store them. And just look at how many different things are in here just when I start eliminating things. And there's a lot of things you could use here. The towers, things like that. So all you got to do is just remember to come in, break down what you have, and use it over and over and over. That's one thing about, uh, about iClone. It allows you to reuse assets every chance you get. Well, that wraps it up for this episode. I appreciate your stopping by, and I very much appreciate all the people that write me, that ask me the questions, send me the tips, point out things that work for them, things like that. Without that, I wouldn't be able to pass these tips along. And yes, we're going to start looking at lighting and things. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be the next one, but I've had a lot of uh, people ask me about three-point lighting for illustration, portraits, things like that. So here you can just see, here's one simple basic setup. We're going to go through some of that, and we'll go through some other types of lighting, and we'll also start looking at some more advanced stuff. But more than anything, I hope that what you get here helps, and I hope I see you next time.